All right, this is our uh, second video for confidence intervals. This is confidence intervals part two. Please make sure that you realize that this is part two. So if you are didn't watch part one, please go back to the playlist in the video right before this one is part one. Please make sure you watch that, okay? Um, so you have to do watch these two videos together, part one and part two. This one's much shorter than part one, though. All right, so now that we understand confidence intervals, we understand that the confidence interval starts off with your um, sample proportion, what you saw in your sample, okay? Then it, it adds or subtracts this guy right here, and that is called the margin of error, <clears throat> okay? Now, error, not a bad thing, it just means how much we're off, because we have to understand that our sample isn't necessarily going to be the exact truth. So hopefully that's just our sample. Um, <clears throat> now, where does these numbers come from? Well, first off, remember the standard error is um, a lot like standard deviation. The standard error of the sample is using p hat and q hat instead of p and q. And that's because we don't even know p and q. We don't even know the true proportion. Heck, that's what the confidence interval is trying to discover. And z star, z star represents how confident you want to be and um, how confident you want to be. And a typical level of confidence is 95% confidence. And we talked about that 95% of data is in between. We, we usually say negative 2 to positive 2 standard deviations, but it's actually better off looked at as 1.96 and negative 1.96 just a little bit more accurate. We talked about that in the previous video. So the first thing I want to talk about is, um, sorry for that, is um, you could change your level of confidence, and changing your level of confidence means changing your Z star score. So I've made a little chart here, and I want to show you how this chart will help us determine how confident we want to be. So, um, if you want to be 90% confident, that means you want a smaller interval. Because so you have a small, you're going to be less confident, right? I mean, obviously being less confident is not as good, but if you want to be, say, only 1% confident, that means you're, you're really completely unsure if you have captured the true P, well, that would be a very small interval. Whereas 99% confident would be a wide interval. I mean, think about it. If you wanted to be 100% confident that you captured the true proportion, you would just go from 0 to 100%, right? Or 0 0 to 1, because that would have to capture it, right? Every proportion is from 0 to 1, but obviously that would be silly. So we want to show you um, how to calculate these percentages. Now, we have already shown you guys that the 95% confidence level, the Z star is 1.96, okay? And that is plus or minus. Now, I want to make sure you guys know where that comes from. If you think about um, the normal model, right? And if we want 95% confidence, which means we want 95% to be in between this Z star and this Z star, well then that leaves 5% left out. Two and a half on the bottom tail and two and a half on the top tail. So we call that our tail percentage. So our tail percentage would be 2.5%. And that is what you need to calculate your Z star. Because what you would then do is go to your calculator, go to invert norm, and we're going to invert norm the bottom um, 2.5% or 0.025. And that's going to come back and give us the 1.96 Z star. Now, it does say negative. That's because it's the bottom. We know that the top 2.5% would be at positive 1.96. And that is where we get our um, Z star from. So let's do 90%. Okay, so if I'm 90% confident then that means that I have 90% um, confident in between these two Z scores. And that means there's 10% left out, 5% on the bottom tail, 5% on the top tail. So you would go to your calculator and you would do an invert norm of 0.05. Again, that bottom 5%. And you'd come back with a Z score of 1.64. So again, be positive or minus 1.64. And again, that's going to create a smaller interval because your Z star score is smaller. 92% um, confident. Again, that's kind of a weird one, but I just thought I'd throw it in there to try to teach you guys the strategy here. If I'm 92% confident, then that means that there's 8% left out, 4% on the bottom tail, and 4% on the top tail. So again, that's what you need to go to your calculator and do an invert norm of 0.04 for that bottom 4%, and that's going to give you the Z star of plus or minus 1.75. And lastly, um, the two most common ones are probably 95% um, and 99%. 90% is used quite often as well. But anyway, 99% would be really confident with that. Um, that is going to make a wider interval, so it should be a bigger value here. So remember, um, 
99% confidence would be, I want 99% to be in between. That's only 1% left out. That's a half a percent on the bottom and a half a percent on the top. A half a percent, very, very small. So that would be invert norm um, 0 0.005, 0 0.005 for that bottom half a percent. And you'd get 2.58. That'd be a Z star of 2.58. So based on how confident you want to be, could change your Z star. And when you go back and look at this formula, it's that Z star there that's going to change. And again, widening or shrinking your interval. Okay. So um, hopefully that helps you with how confident you want to be. Now, there's one more type of problem that is really important to us. <laughs> And that is going to be determining your sample size. So we know enough about margin of error to determine if I want a small margin of error, I need to ask more people. Think about that. If I want to be more accurate to the truth, I should have a bigger sample size because a bigger sample size were very less. So let's look at this problem. This problem says we want to determine the proportion of people who wear their seatbelts. So we wholeheartedly plan on finding a sample proportion. However, Past data has shown that number to be 72%. So again, we're kind of trying to get an estimate here for what you know our, our the truth is, because we want to see maybe it's lowered or maybe it's higher due to stricter laws. In order for us to be 95% confident with a margin of error only 2%, so we want a very small margin of error here. We only we want to be only be off by 2%. How many people should be in our sample? So it all starts off with us giving the margin of error. So we have a formula. Remember, mar margin of error is the back part. It's the Z star times your standard error of your sample. So now margin of error, um, we were told we want to be 0.02. We want to have a very small margin of error, 2%. And the Z star is based on how confident you want to be. We want to be 95% confident, which would be a Z star of 1.96. And now for our standard error. Our standard error, remember standard error is uh, the p hat q hat divided by n. Now here's the problem. Um, we haven't even ran the sample yet. How do we know what p hat is? So we can't figure out p hat till we've run our sample. But the question is trying to figure out how many people should be in our sample to be accurate. So what do we use for p hat and q hat? Well, we have to use something. And why not use what past data has shown? Now, that's not a definitely a p hat because that was what past data has shown. But think of it as we got nothing else to use. So might as well use the 0.72 and the opposite of 0.72. Um, the Q would be 0.28. And again, that's all we got to go on. Um, divided by N. So now we want to solve this for our sample size. Okay, we want to solve this for our sample size. Now, I can tell you right now in the past, a lot of kids struggle with solving this for N. It is no more statistics right now. It's all algebra. Do you have the algebra skills to solve? First thing I do is divide by the 1.96. So I'm going to divide both sides by 1.96. And this is one of those things you might want to watch a couple times to figure out. Um, and I get a value of 0 0.0102. Now, there's some more decimals there, so I'm going to store that on my calculator. Okay. And I'm going to actually go ahead and multiply 0 0.72 times 0 0.28. I mean, why not multiply that? I already could, I could do that. That's just simple math. 0 0.2016, that is 0 0.72 times 0 0.28, divided by m. Now, I'm going to square both sides to get rid of the square root. And I'm going to take that stored value that I stored and square that. And I get uh, I get a very small number. Look at the, there's to the far right, you should see an e to the negative 4. So that's 0. 0.000104. Again, I'm going to store that. I'm going to store that as maybe alpha a or something because there's a lot of decimals there. And I get 0. 0.2016 divided by n equals that. <clears throat> okay, now I'm not out of the water yet here. I still got to multiply both sides by n. And that's going to bring the n over to here. So now I have 0 0.000104. Again, that's stored on my calculator. Times n equals 0 0.2016. And now I just have to divide that by that stored value um, on my calculator. Um, so here we go, 0 0.2016 divided by that stored value. And I get that my sample size needs to be 1,936. 0.1664. So where we just round that up, obviously rounding up would be better than anything else. So if I sample 1,937 people, I could be very confident, 95% confident, and I'd have a very, very small margin of error. So um, my margin of error would be 
up 2% or down 2% from my sample proportion, which would be, man, that'd be really, really good. A very, very tight interval that would um, make me very confident that the true proportion is in there. But notice the drawback is I would have to ask a lot of people. So it's not rocket appliance, but um, the problem is um, a little bit difficult in the sense that you have to solve a tough algebraic problem. All right, let's do one more here. Same kind of issue here. A uh, new candidate wants to serve a sample to see what percent of people will vote his way in an upcoming election. In order to be 99% confident, and with a margin of error of 1%, oh boy, how many, sorry for the <laughs> typo there, <laughs> how many people should be in his sample? Okay, well, let's see here. Uh, margin of error formula, we know the margin of error formula is that Z star times your standard error of your sample proportion. Well, we want a very, very tight margin of error. This candidate wants to be really, really accurate. He wants to be really, really um, accurate on finding the true percentage of people that are going to vote for him. Okay, the Z star for 99% confident. Let's walk through that. We went through that earlier in the video. If I'm 99% confident, that's 1% left out, a half a percent on the bottom tail and a half a percent on the top tail. So I'm going to invert norm a half a percent, which is 0 0.005, and I get that Z star score of 2.58 for 99% confident. Now, once again, the formula for standard error is p hat q hat divided by n. Now, the problem is I have no idea what p hat and q hat are. A, I haven't even done the sample, but in the last problem, at least we knew a past data showed 72%. I don't even have that here. So honestly, if you have no idea what to use for your p hat and q hat, I'm just going to go ahead and use 50-50. I mean, that should make sense in the election, right? Because isn't 50-50 the cutoff between, hey, if more than 50% people vote for me, I'm going to win. If less, I'm going to lose. So when you have nothing else to use for your p hat and q hat, especially because you have not even found your sample proportion yet, um, go ahead and use just 50-50. So let me go ahead and solve this. Again, I'm going to, um, let me use a different color here, just jazz this up. Divide both sides by 2.58 and again I look at this I want to be really confident with a small margin of error so I'm probably going to have a very large sample size here but anyway 0.01 divided by 2.58 and uh, I get 0 0.0039 again store that on your calculator please uh, 0.5 times 0.5 is 0.25. I can multiply that out. It makes my life a little bit easier. Now I'm going to square both sides. So square that value that you had stored or just um, square the number that you had on your screen there. And you get, don't look at that E. You're going to get a real small number here. 0. 0.00015. Store that on your calculator, please. I'm begging you because you don't want to round that. Okay, you want to be real accurate here. Now I'm going to multiply both sides by N. That's going to bring the n up here, so it'll be 0 0.000015 times n equals 0.25. And now I'm going to divide both sides by that small, very small number that I have stored on my calculator. So I'm showing all my work here, um, but I'm definitely going to use the store feature on my calculator to make life a little bit easier. And I get, oh, a huge sample size, 16,000. 641, and I can't believe that that number worked out with no decimals. What are the chances? Um, so again, why such a huge sample size? Well, look, I want to be really confident, and I want to have a huge margin of error. I mean, no wonder I need to have a huge sample size, um, because I want to look to have a real small margin of error. So I'm not, I want my window for what the true proportion of people are going to vote for me. I want that window to be up 1% or down 1% from my sample proportions. That's a really tight window. So hopefully these problems made sense. So if you guys understand how to solve for the sample size based on margin of error, hopefully you understand how to get different Z star scores based on your how confident you want to be. And hopefully you still are understanding the formula for how to find a confidence interval. And again, I want to remind you guys a confidence interval is trying to find the true proportion portion of whatever we're looking for and we obviously need to find that so that's it have a good weekend talk to you guys later